Good afternoon, everyone. It's Jono here. Um, it's one o'clock, and I'm in the middle of moving house, which is quite interesting. Um, but I just wanted to come live just to basically introduce the incredible Renee Naylor. Now, um, for those of you that don't know Renee, Renee has been in the industry for many years, um, working at such a huge high performance level, consulting to many people around the world. Um, but most importantly, her journey has obviously been with the Stormers to start off with, and then being with SA Rugby, being the, the lead physiotherapist for many, many years. Um, and most recently, obviously, being in charge of the team that won the World Cup um, last year in Japan, which was an incredible feat. Uh, Ren came in and just, and, and just sorted everything out and just made everything at such a high level. Um, we've been working together for many, many years. She's the most incredible um, em like empathetic, compassionate human being there is and skilled worker in this department, uh, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so I just wanted to come in and just have a quick intro with her. Then I'm going to jump out because and leave it to her because she's the expert. Um, she's going to be discussing, obviously, a um, few exercises we can do to strengthen uh, the areas around our knees. There's a lot of things that have been coming up, and you guys have been asking us questions about that. So, um, without ado, let's bring in the incredible, the sultry, Renee Naylor. What? There she what is. is it, Hello, Thanks Lana. for that introduction. Good to see you. Well, it's and good luck with the move. Thank you. It's horrible. I still haven't. I, just to be honest, I haven't showered since this morning since I took Frank for a run. Um, what Jules has been ordering me around, like you cannot believe, as we're speaking, there's people moving it. But anyway, besides that point, Ren, thanks so much for joining us. Um, for those of you at home, I, I've known Ren for many years. Um, she's an absolutely insane human being, first and foremost. Um, She's an incredible friend, and she is just the most incredibly skilled physiotherapist, probably the best we've got, um, I would say, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, Ren has obviously been, she's full-time with, with SA Rugby, runs whole, the whole Springbok department with regards to the physiotherapy, uh, had an incredible success last year with the World Cup, obviously, um, and it's just it's such a pleasure to have you here, and, and, and we're actually spoiled to have you, uh, first and foremost, Ren. Um, you, I've been personally working with you, doing your, doing your training, and you've got incredible results with our, our program, which is insane as well. So when Renee was was training around the world, she'd um, I'd send her programs and and just absolutely insane. Um, um an incredible mother and just an incredible human being. Um, Ren, quickly, just to for everyone at home, I know like last year was was obviously very 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 a, a huge thing for for the World Cup. Give us um, and winning the World Cup. Give us a little bit of. Uh, insight into what that emotion was like because we were all sitting at home juggling on red wine trying to keep ourselves sane um during that period but give us a bit of insight to what it was like being on the side of the field and running the show and just doing everything at that period of time it was surreal and it's so nice to see pics now i mean it's seven months down the line can you believe it and our lives have changed so much with COVID since then but if I go back to that moment, getting onto that platform, holding that gold medal, it, there's nothing that can beat that. And I must say, it was long and hard. I mean, we were together for 20 weeks. So you can just think about, you know, this lockdown is nothing. We were together for 20 weeks, breakfast, lunch, and supper. All of us really tight. And we told each other, 21 weeks because the last week is the trophy tour. The last week is the party week. And we all yeah. look forward to that. So, I mean, but I mean, that is, that is the, the, the pinnacle of, you know, of my career, definitely getting that gold medal. And also the fact that we work so hard for it. I mean, it was 614 days of prep before that final. 100%. 100%. So, and, and, you know, that, that ties in so, like, massively to what, to what we do. It's like we, we're preaching you've got to trust the process. You've, you've got to just stick to the plan. Please. It doesn't happen overnight. Totally. Um, totally. And, 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 you know, just stick to your routine. And that comes along with rehabilitation as well. I mean, um, I mean, Red, like you, you are very strong in your form and your continuity with regards to having injuries, uh, rehabilitating and carrying on with, with your rehabilitation process. I think a lot of people, which, which they get wrong, is if they have an injury, they go to a physio and they go, oh, I'll go for one or two appointments. And then they, they don't continue with what they're doing and they fall back into the bad trap of, of picking up an injury or something like that. 
So um, I think, you know, from a consistency point of view, it's things we have to work on all the time to improve from a physical uh, point of view, from a mental point of view. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this in informative, um, you know, like uh, demonstrations, which you're going to show us. Obviously, we've asked our customer, like, what are we struggling with? And, and, and people keep on coming back with, I've got knee pain, doesn't know what kind of knee pain is. So I just thought this would be really good that we could talk about um, sort of major muscle groups or whatever, certain exercises that can assist in, in obviously relieving that pain, maybe not taking it away, but relieving it and, and strengthening those major muscle groups around those joints to, to, um, to help eliminate and, and just to, to strengthen up for individuals. So um, without ado, I'm going to get this ugly, unshaven face out of the screen, and we're going to leave it to the better-looking person on the screen, which is definitely the gorgeous Renee, and she's going to take you through. So, Ren, over to you. Um, our clients will probably interact with you, and um, they're an amazing bunch. We are a huge family of 40,000 people in 110 um, countries around the world, and everyone is just so excited to, to, to see you. So, over to you, my darling. Have a good time, and I will speak to you later. And lots of love to Jules. I will. She's irritating me today, but it's fine. So, guys, it's so exciting to be here. This is my first time on Deaf Faculty joining the family. I mean, I've been a client, you know, training with you. I'd never go anywhere in the world without Jeff's program. I mean, whenever I was touring, that is what kept me sane, is this training. So, well done to all of you that have actually joined this program. It's phenomenal. But obviously with lockdown, you are probably doing some things that you've not done before. A lot of star jumps, a lot of burpees, because a lot of your cardio has to happen in the house and you're not going to gym. And so you're getting the terrible knee pain, that irritating, nagging, niggling knee pain, particularly the anterior, the front of the knee that starts niggling. And it's very common. It's common for runners. But it's very common if you start doing a lot of pilometrics, a lot of jumping, that is where it you know, becomes a problem. And obviously with the rugby, we see it with our kickers, that they get this anterior knee pain. So I'm going to share with you today just a few exercises. I am not as experienced as, as they are with these live videos. So I'm going to explain my exercises to you, demonstrate, and then I'm going to look at this to see what questions you guys have. and then you know, answer as many of your questions as possible regarding your problem. Now, obviously, when you're exercising, it's okay to have pain in your muscles. It's okay to feel that burn in your glutes as you're working, as you're doing your, you know, your down-unders and, you know, doing those, those push-ups and all. You're getting pain in different parts of your body. But you shouldn't have pain in the joint line. Then something's not right. Either there's something in the knee that's not right, or maybe your technique is not correct. But you shouldn't be getting a sharp, stabbing pain when you're doing your exercises inside the knee. The pain must be here and here and here, where you're really working it and you're really getting stronger. So let's look at the knee. So what are the first things that I'm going to say to you? I mean, maybe you must have a pen and paper, or you, you, know, you can obviously watch it afterwards, but just to remember, the main focus is to get the glutes working because your glutes, of all things, are your main stabilizers for your knee. If these glutes are not firing, all the strain goes to the knee. So we always say the basic thing is to get the glutes firing. Also, keep the knee aligned. Make sure that this knee is aligned when you're doing your exercises. Don't let the knee buckle, fall in, fall out. This knee must stay nicely aligned when you're doing your exercises. And for it to stay aligned, you need activation of these quads, the VMO. Some of you may know the VMO, may have heard this word be mentioned by your physios. Your VMO needs to fire, fire, fire. And then, of course, the outside of the knee needs to be nice and supple. This ITB, if your ITB is tight, it's going to push your kneecap towards the outside. And that is what causes a lot of knee pain. So let's look at what can you actually do to help this. The first thing, activating the glutes. So I'm gonna show you a must exercise for anyone 
that's got me pain is the clam exercise. This is your first exercise that I'm going to show you. And you're going to position your knees and your hips at 90 degrees, your feet on top of each other. Okay, you're going to lie flat down and you're going to push on, put your hand on your glute, your glute medius, and you're going to push up. Some of you can try this now and take that knee to the ceiling and you're going to feel the glute activating. You must feel it here at the back as you're doing this. And I will do these clams because you're opening up a clamshell. Open up the clamshell and feel the glutes working. And I will start off by doing 10 reps of this exercise. You can do four sets of 10 reps to really strengthen and activate those glute muscles with this clam exercise. Another way to activate the glutes is to just lie on your side, bend the bottom leg to 90 degrees, your hip and your knee, straighten the leg, turn the toes up, and then you're going to lift to the ceiling. Again, feel it here at the back as you do this. Feel it. And these exercises, you won't experience any knee pain while you're doing it. You'll just be feeling it burning in the glutes as you do it. Third one that we're going to move to to activate those glutes is your single leg bridge. Now, if you bridge, you can lift both, you know, lift, keep both feet on the ground and lift your glutes, but then it's not as strenuous on that glute muscle. If you do the single leg glute bridge, it's very powerful. So you're going to lie on your back. You're going to keep your pelvis level as you lift the glutes. And you're going to straighten the leg. Let me lift this leg so you can see. Straighten the leg. And you keep your pelvis level. And you feel those glutes activating. And you go down and lift up. And again, do 10 repetitions to start with. Working, working that posterior chain. Because that posterior chain needs to be working really hard if you want to combat that knee pain. That's very, very important. I would do those exercises at least three times a week to really see the difference in your glute muscles and to help with that knee pain because it's going to give you more stability around your knee. Move to the squats. Now, I'm sure many of you are doing lots of squats at home and squats are very important to strengthen the leg, the lower leg. It's a very important exercise, but it must be done properly. You can't do squats incorrectly. It's going to cause knee pain. And you shouldn't have knee pain when you're doing it. So let me show you the easy way first is to do your squats against a wall. You all have a wall at home, so we're going to do it against the wall here. Going to get here against the wall. Now, the important thing is the feet position when you're doing a squat. Keep them a little bit out. It's slightly turned out. So they mustn't be too narrow because you're going to go and do that. They mustn't be too far apart that you're doing that. So just a little bit out of the shoulder or hip and a little bit turned out, okay? Important that we keep the back neutral when we're doing our squats, important. I sometimes say, take your arms out in front so that you keep your balance, and then you go down. You're sitting on a chair. If I did this away from the wall, you basically feel that you mustn't be doing that, but there must be a hinge at the hip. When you're going down, there must be a hinge at the hip as you go down and do your squat. There must be a hinge that you're sitting down. Very important, the knees are not going over the toes. That is not what you want. That is what causes the knee pain. You must always be taking it back. Knees must be behind the feet. So now some of you are going to be very strong and the wall squats may be too easy. So you want to try something more difficult, and then you're going to try 
the single leg squat, you can start it just using a chair to make it easier for you. So you're going to stand up like that and slowly take it down. And the height of your chair is going to determine how hard it is. Very important that you make sure the knee does not buckle. So if this is very hard to go so low down, you then just take something that is higher, that you're just going there and coming up. But making sure that you keep this knee in a lined position. The knee should not buckle. And, and I mean, obviously, I'm not there to tell you what, uh, you, know, you know, what is appropriate for you. You have to see what's appropriate for you because you shouldn't be experiencing knee pain. If this is too hard, you go back and you do wall squats. If that's too easy, you can go and do single leg squats with a chair or without the chair. You can do your, your single leg squats. Another favorite of mine, you take this back. Another favorite of mine is the single leg running man. Now, why is it such a favorite of mine? Is because it's going to incorporate everything. Because we've now worked a little bit on the quads and we did our squats. The single leg running man is going to get those quads working, it's going to get those glutes working, and it works on your balance and proprioception, big word, but it's going to help that whole chain, the single leg running man. So you're going to do alternate, you not get this wrong, and you can start off by doing this just 10 repetitions, and then you can build up to even 30 repetitions, because you're going to activate that glute on that side. Make sure we keep the pelvis level, a soft knee on the standing leg. We keep the control and the glutes are firing on the standing leg. So we get everything working very nicely with a single leg running man. And when you, when you improve even further, you can do your single leg running man and you can include a hop when that leg is stronger and that knee is not giving you any pain. So it's just a progression of the exercise for you. So, before we go on to looking at your, your questions, I want to also tell you about the ITB. Now, the ITB is often the culprit that's causing your knee pain. Now, many people will be telling you how to stretch your ITB. And it's very hard to stretch your ITB if it is tight, if there's tightness in it, if it's really burning on the outside and it will really change if it's tight it's going to change the alignment of your kneecap your kneecap your patella is already going to be shifting because this itb is tight so you may have to release this itb before you even start the exercise how can we do that at home so let's i brought some some stuff that you can find at home so firstly i would use a tennis ball we don't have fancy foam rollers so we're just going to use the tennis ball. Where so the tennis ball, you're going to put firstly, I would put it on top. You know, your ITB goes right down. And you're going to put it on top. Oh my gosh, mine is burning. And I'm going to roll it to try and release. And that my TVs are clearly very tight, and and then I'm re releasing now at the attachment with the tennis ball, and you'll roll as much as you can. Some of you may be lucky to have foam rollers, so you can often often you know you would just use your foam roller, but a tennis ball will work just as well, releasing that whole ITB, and obviously even the quads if your quads are burning. I also like to suggest you use a rolling pin. We use it for lots of things, and I'm sure many of you have been baking in the lockdown, but the rolling pin is also effective in releasing. Because the quads, adductors, all of these muscles would become very tight if you've been doing a lot of jumping activities, and it needs to be released regularly, particularly if you know that your weakness in your kinetic chain is around the knee. 
the anterior knee. So I would use the rolling pin and just release wherever it's tight. Ooh, mine are quite sore. And I'm sure you guys, if you've been doing three sessions and John and Jules' sessions, you would be feeling very tight. So I would do that. Obviously, I would say that if you cannot do these exercises because your knee is paining too much, then it's a sign that you need to see a physio. You need to go and see your physio or DM me. DM me on Instagram. If I don't get to your question, I'll DM me on Instagram. I am here at my practice. I'm actually in the recovery area of my practice here in Cape Town. So if you're in Cape Town, give me a call because then we can make sure that we release it properly with obviously with manual therapy. And we look at obviously taping to help get the alignment of the knee you know, better and make sure that you activate the correct muscle so that you don't get that anterior knee pain. I hope this is going to help you guys. I'm going to look now at the that we're having. Uh, yeah, something like very good. That's a very good point. She says you need to do this in front of the mirror. Very important point that I forgot to mention. If you're in front of the mirror, you can make sure that your pelvis is level and that you're not buckling the knee as you do it because you do not want the knee to do that. So whenever you're doing your balance exercises and your squat exercises, the knee is facing forward. Now, as mentioned, let's see Ronelle. Ronelle have a good point here. She speaks about her knees crackle when she does squats and lunges, but they don't hurt. She just finds the noise very off-putting. And pop. So that's not always great. And as we get older, we sometimes do hear these, these creaking in our, in our squats and lunges. The important point is to make sure that you're doing correctly, even with lunges. Another important point, because lunges is a very good exercise for the knee, but it's not front lunges where you're stepping over. And sometimes when we're tired, fatigued, I mean, I know Jono kills you in those sessions, and so does Siri. Those are hard sessions, and you sometimes get tired. Always remember not to let the knee go over the toes. And rather, I would say if you do suffer from knee pain, do a reverse lunge, because the reverse lunge is going to take that weight posteriorly. So you're going to actually use that posterior chain as opposed to going forward and going with the knee over the toes. Because that's often what happens. People go over the toes when they step forward with the lunge. So I would say if you do suffer from knee pain, try and do reverse lunges. So that's going to make sure you can activate the posterior chain. Those glutes are going to really start working. Let's see what other questions we have. So can, can knee problems affect the front of the foot? Yes, Tessa, it can. So if you have knee problems, you must remember that it can affect anywhere in this kinetic chain, which we call the kinetic chain. So you don't be surprised if you end up having hip problems on that side, or it could be chicken egg. The hip could be the problem to start off with, and that's what's causing your knee problem, because you're not using the muscles around the hip effectively. It's putting strain on the knee. The same with the foot. If you've got anterior knee pain, it can also cause the tibialis anterior, which is the muscle on the front of the shin that goes down to the foot to cause foot problems. And also, if you're buckling, it's going, to, it's going to affect. If you're buckling your knee when you're doing your exercises, it's going to affect your pronation. If your foot is pronating excessively, it is also a reason that you can get anterior knee pain. Let's see. Um, To do these exercises before or after an actual workout routine, or doesn't it matter? I would say that it's very important to make sure that you incorporate what, what we call as physios, your prehab exercises. These are proactive exercises. These are prehab exercises that you want to use to actually prevent problems. So if you're doing prehab, I wouldn't do many reps. You're not strengthening yet. You're doing prehab. So if you want to do it before an actual workout, I will only do 10 reps. And then I will say, right, I'm doing it to activate my glutes. 
So if my glutes are working nicely, I'll cope better with this workout that I'm going to do now. Or you could say, right, I'm going to make it a mission that over the next month, I'm going to strengthen all the muscles that I need to around my knee. So I'm going to make sure that I do this routine. I've just given you six exercises, six basic exercises. I'm going to do this three times a week. And I'm going to do starting off with 10 to 12 reps of each exercise three times a week so that over a, by the end of the month, I can say that I've actually strengthened it. But 100%, it can be used as a warm-up. point she's mentioning just what I've said now about the reverse lunges. Now, Kathleen from West, Westbrook, you, you mentioned that my knees ache on back lunge too. Maybe this will improve with this exercise you showed us. They're similar to the ones I have to do with my with hip pain from running. Yes, yeah, so if, you, if you're getting knee pain, I, I, I always say pain is a warning sign if it's in a joint. If you're getting DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness because you've exercised, that's 100%. We want that because that is showing us we, we're training hard enough to, to get changes in our muscles and our muscles are getting stronger. So you want that. But you do not want to feel pain in the actual joint line or around the patella. If you're getting pain there, even with back lunges, I would suggest you have your knees assessed by a physiotherapist so that the physio can tell you, listen, there is damage to the cartilage or there's no damage. It actually just needs some strengthening or needs some taping while you do something or to just assess your biomechanics. Are you doing, are you doing your exercises correctly? So now it says that sometimes when I'm out walking, my right knee just gives way for the second and then it's fine. Yes, and so that often is important to note that it means that your balance and your proprioception may not be great. Proprioception is basically knowing where your, your foot and your, your knee is in space, in a three-dimensional space. So sometimes if that's poor, and I mean, I feel now as I'm getting older, my balance is terrible, so embarrassing as to you know, demonstrate this exercise, my balance isn't always good because it does get worse as we get older. And I find that you sometimes, if you're tired or if you're just cold and you haven't warmed up properly, that is what happens. It gives, it gives way. But that giving way is an indication that the muscular control is not balanced on your inner thighs and your outer thighs, you know, and you need to get the muscle control better if you find that your knee is giving way. Um, yes. Let's see what else we have here. So, I've been having knee problems with my knee since last year. Feels like the problem is in the area between the joints of the knee. How do I manage this? The cartilage may be a concern. So now, if your cartilage is damaged, which is a normal part of aging, just like our skin gets changes and, you know, our hair changes, becomes gray, so the joints change and so our, our bones change as we get older. And you can't, you can't prevent the aging process, but you can delay it by making sure that all the muscles supporting that joint are strong. So if the muscles are nice and strong, your quads are nice and strong, your glutes are nice and strong, your core is nice and strong, then you are actually going to have less strain on the actual joint and the cartilage. But you sometimes need to go a step back and take away all the jumping activities for a bit until you get that, that base of strength. And then you can go on and do the exercises. I don't, I don't like to tell people that you have to stop. You never have to say you have to stop exercising. It's often just a modification of the exercises you're doing to, to prevent the deterioration of your cartilage that's obviously aging as you're getting older. So 
a good question. He says he gets pain where his quad meets the knee, and it usually happens an hour after the workout. Is is that knee doing an exercise incorrectly? So I would say, Greg, the important thing is be aware when you're doing your exercises. And if you are doing your workouts at home, I would say make sure you're doing it in the mirror that you're not doing over the knee, anything going over the knee. Everything must be working back. The squats must be working back so that you're not going over. That's, that's, that's the, the, the crucial thing, that you're not going o- over your knee and that you're not buckling. However, if you are getting pain on top and not at the, at, on the knee, that's just the knee, the muscle that's worked really hard. And if that subsides, you know, after a few minutes, then it's just a matter of the muscle that's really worked hard. And then it's not, not that you've done it incorrectly, but it's good to check that, you, that you're not doing anything incorrectly. Very excited about what Tamara has mentioned. She's reminded us about the hip flexors that are also very important. Just as much as we want the glutes to work, if your hip flexors are tight, they're also going to inhibit your glutes from activating. So you also have to release the, the hip flexors and also I often go right up your hip flexors, go right up here, that all have to be released. You can use the same technique of using your tennis ball and your rolling pin at home, but the most effective release for a hip flexor, I find, is if you go for actual therapy, for physiotherapy, so they can actually release it if that is what's actually inhibiting. I know you often find it with people that are doing a lot of cycling and they, you know, in a lot of flexion all the time, so it will cause cause the hip flexors to be really tight and then it's difficult to activate your glute muscles. So very good, very good point. Thank you for that. Let's see. And because she has some crackling in both her knees and she's been told by an orthopedic surgeon she has to have a double knee uh, replacement because of degeneration of the cartilage, but not now I'm too young. I have a lot of pain, but I've learned to live with it. Besides backward lunges, I'm due to, I take the pressure off my knees. There's also, I said, no lunges, squats, nor step up. Okay, so Tanya, I feel really scared to go, call, or go and say anything based, obviously, you've seen an orthopedic specialist. He's assessed you. I've not assessed your knees. I've not seen the scans of your knees, and I've not seen how severe the deterioration is. But if the deterioration is that excessive, and they don't want you to go into squats and lunges, I would say then you have to do some exercises in the water. That's always what I find. I mean, we've, we've got a pool here. We get them into the warm pool and we've got weights that we put around the ankles and we do strengthening in the water first before we go on to land base. So that sometimes takes the pressure off the knees. Or we sometimes use, there are machines that, that physios use or you can purchase like complex machines that actually get you to activate and strengthen really nicely around the joint. And that's really the only thing you can do is to first go on a full strength program with a rehab specialist. And if that's not effective, then obviously you have to go and, and do the surgery. Thing about heat and about ice. So now it depends on what you, what you want to achieve. So if you if you want to relieve pain after exercise, I always advocate ice, particularly if it's a if it's a peripheral joint like a knee. Sometimes with if it's a if it's a lower back that's really sore, I say heat. But for the knee, I would say ice really works well if you've got a lot of pain. If you want to loosen up muscles, then sometimes heat helps to loosen up the muscle and after you've done some rolling with a tennis ball or with your with your pin and you want to you know just relax the muscle i would use some heat but ice works effectively around the knee joint to, to recover recovery is very important that's a whole new discussion we'll do some time but you know how you recover from exercise is so important because that's the way you can actually 
you know, we find that elite athletes can continue and do the, the workloads that they do. And we must do the same if we're training at home. We must also have our little routine of recovery to ensure that you can keep straining your body to get fitter and stronger. about the ankle rocking while doing one leg balance that's Jenna will my knee exercises improve my ankle strength or should I specifically do ankle exercises so so obviously the you know your knee your hip your ankle it's all one kinetic chain and they all work together and I would say that if you start doing balance exercises as a, as a basic it's going to improve your knee as well so I would say that balance exercises are important. Your balance and proprioception is very important if you're doing uh, training for, you know, to try and prevent knee pain and ankle pain. We always say that the first phase of any rehab and prehab is to do your balance exercises. Uh, I hope I've covered most of it. I'm not, not the expert in these live videos as, as my colleagues. But we will get there. But thanks so much. And I hope that all the exercises I've shown you is going to be of good help to you and help you get through your knee pain. And keep, please stick to the plan. This program that Jeff sets out does work. I promise you it works. Just take it one day at a time and trust the process. Always trust the process. It takes a, it takes a lot and it's a lot of prep and it's a lot of sacrifice, but it's worth it in the end. Enjoy.